Robert Williams from MetalRules.com and joining me tonight in Austin, Texas is the one and only Max Cavalera, vocalist for Cavalera Conspiracy. How are you doing today, Max? Good. What's up, man? Musicians like yourselves who have years and years of experience both in the studio and touring abroad, what do you find to be the most challenging aspect of creating a thrasher piece like Blunt Force Trauma? I think the hardest part of, of making a record like Blood Force Trauma is to actually um, to combine the fast stuff with the groove stuff uh, in a way that it keeps the album interesting and, and doesn't become a repetition and it doesn't become uh, like you're trying to do something that was already done before um, because we're using a formula of, of music based on trash metal and death metal uh, but we don't want to sound like it's just a remake you know that to sound like it's new like it's done right now with a new sound so it's a little bit tricky to do that but I think we did a pretty cool job and I'm pretty proud of Blunt Force Trauma how it uh, has both sides has the fast stuff the trash stuff and has the groovy stuff and then put them together it really works as a whole like when you listen to the whole record as a whole I think it becomes interesting and you don't get tired of the album when you listen to it yeah I think you're right and, and a lot of people have been saying you know um, the longest track on Blood Force Trauma still clocks in at well under five minutes was that a conscious decision to approach this new record with the heavier faster louder mindset yeah it was a totally conscious decision we wanted to make shorter tracks uh, without filler up uh, just right to the point, uh, really basic, uh, really primal, and uh, kind of stripped to the bone to a metal song, which what the metal song is, it's right here, you don't need anything else, this is what it needs, and we went right to, the, to that, to the message, right to the, with no bullshit, just right there, exactly, direct to the point, and the album ended up being shorter too uh, which I think is something that's interesting because uh, this, this people's span of, of attention these days are shorter than what it used to be in the past and people cannot stay with an album if the album is longer than an hour people lose interest and they do not uh, hear the whole record so we tend to make shorter record like we did in Arise or uh, Slayer Raining Blood which are shorter albums but with more on it, so it's kind of like the last is more uh, formula um, that kind of work, you know, for this kind of music. You know, it really is like that. So when you listen to the record, you get to hear the whole thing, and you get to the end, and you want more, and you put it back on the beginning and listen to it again, which is what we wanted people to do, you know. So Max, on the new album, you got songs about legendary warlords, a tune about a clairvoyant, you got a token thrash anthem. Another song deals with the false prophet lunatic David Koresh. Really a pretty diverse range of subject matter. How do you approach writing your lyrics? Did you have to do a lot of reading and researching before putting the pen to paper? How does that work? Um, just try to get new ideas. Uh, you know, the, 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 yeah, the lyrics are pretty much um, a reflection of the music. So the music on the album is really what is giving the, the, the lyrics the direction. So that's why it's a lot of brutal stuff and a lot of powerful stuff like David Koresh and Genghis Khan and Rasputin and um, Warlord and that kind of, you know, uh, lynch mob kind of lyrics which are really powerful, very aggressive, very violent because it's a reflection of the music, you know. So I think uh, what determines the lyrics in the end of the day is the music of Blunt Force Trauma, which was written first. So the music inspired the lyrics. And, I, and when I hear the music of Blunt Force Trauma, I went out and looked for subjects and stuff that I thought would be, you know, equivalent so you can fit the music. So that's when I found, you know, inspiration in stuff like Genghis Khan and Rasputin and David Koresh and all that. Let's talk about the bonus tracks for the vinyl edition of Blood Force Trauma. You guys recorded Electric Funeral by the Mighty Black Sabbath, and I'm curious as to why you chose that song, but you also recorded Six Pack by Black Flag, which brings me to my next question, which would be, what is Max Cavalera's favorite six pack of beer? 
Uh, actually, I don't drink beer, man. <laughs> Which is ironic because I cover a song that's about beer. You Just know? a huge Black Flag fan. Just huh? a black, I love the song. Uh, I love the fact the song is about getting fucked up. Which I, you know, when I, I don't drink anymore. But when I used to drink, I drink wine and uh, rum and vodka and whiskey and everything except beer. I just never liked beer. I don't know why. Um, I like the harder stuff, the heavier shit. Yeah. You know, whiskey and vodka and go right to the hardcore shit. You know. I like all those things. So looking back at your track record and classic records from bands like Sepultura, Nail Bomb, Soulfly, and Cavalera Conspiracy, as an artist, are you ever able to take a step back and analyze and maybe pick a song or a record in particular and say, I think this is my best work, this defines who I am? You got to that point yet? No, I don't really do that much, you know. I don't really uh, look at the past that much even. I, I kind of like to think there's more to come. There's always new work to be done. And there's something uh, always in front of me. There's always a challenge, a new uh, album to be made, and uh, new work to be done. And I don't really, really leave. I'm not a guy that leaves from the past. I know there's a, a great, awesome amount of record like Roots and Beneath the Remains and Arise and Nail Bomb and Soulfly, and all you know, really cool record that were part of my life. But I don't really live for the past you know yeah. I live for the present and the future so right now I'm really thinking of the next soul fly you know what I'm gonna do for that record which comes out next year you know so I'm always into the future so this past March Cavalera Conspiracy had the honor of performing as direct support for British heavy metal legends Iron Maiden in front of a sold-out audience in Sao Paulo Brazil that must have been a huge moment for you guys how did it all go down it was great man you know it was a uh, Real nice uh, soccer stadium. Uh, I actually saw Queen there for the first time. It was a teenager, so it was great to be playing at the same place that Queen play. Um, I remember they treated us really good. They wanted us on that show. They specifically requested that was Cavalera that opened that show. It was a request that came from them. Uh, their crew were real nice and really get, you know help us in all the aspects during the, the day of the show, and we had a great show. Um, the people really love the new stuff. We play some of the stuff from uh, Blood Force Trauma, and we play some old favorites uh, from uh, Inflicted and some Sepultura stuff. And it was a great show. I really enjoy it. You know, it was there was a lot of people there. A lot of um, a lot of Iron Maiden shirts. You know, like everybody had pretty much had an Iron Maiden shirt on. I never saw so many Iron Maiden shirts in my life. Uh, but it was a great show. The people really liked us. So in late April, you guys were left with no choice but to perform a concert without Igor behind the drum kit. And in the end, you were able to utilize Greg Hall of Sacred Reich to fill in on the drums at the last minute. Uh, what was that experience like? That was stressful, man, you know, because Igor uh, just uh, called us and told us he could not make for the first show. He was holed up in London uh, with a visa problem. And we couldn't we didn't want to cancel the show, you know, uh, but at the same time, what are we going to do? You know, we need somebody that can play. And I talked about Greg, you know, he was the only guy I thought I could call in that short notice. And I asked Greg, do you know the, the Cavalera stuff, you know? Uh, he, so he says, I know the first album, perfect, I can play everything from the first record. The new album, I just got it, I'm, I'm listening to it right now. I, I think I can play it. You know, if you guys get me a sound check, I can probably do it. So we went with Greg and uh, decided to do it with him, and uh, with the help of uh, Igor's roadie uh, uh, Guilherme, that plays some Sepultura tracks, and my two kids that play some Sepultura stuff too, Zion and Igor, and Greg. We made it happen. You know, so it was a contribution of many people. You know, pulling all together. Uh, it was the House of Blues uh, first show in LA, and uh, it was packed. And uh, I did not know what to expect. Not having Igor there, you know, it was nerve-wracking. But it was a good show, and Greg did great. He really, really uh, knew the set, the the Cavalera stuff, and performed them great. So we had a good show in the end. 